Hello everybody. In this video we are going to be looking at the solutions to the College Prep Electromagnetic Spectrum Homework Problems 6 through 10. Well, let's get started with problem 6. What is the frequency of oxygen spectral line if its wavelength is 513 nanometers? So in this problem, we are given the wavelength of oxygen, which is 513 nanometers. I know because that is nanometers, I do need to convert that to meters. So 513 nanometers converted to meters will be 513 times 10 to the minus ninth meters. No, the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And I am trying to find the frequency. So if I have the wavelength and I have the speed of light, I know I'm going to need to use my wave speed formula for electromagnetic waves, which is C equals um, frequency times wavelength. And remember, this is just like our wave speed formula. Whoops, let me not do that in highlighter. Let me try this here. Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. So just kind of keep that in mind that we are really working with the same formula. We just have a special value for the velocity because that is the speed of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum. And when I do all that math out, I'm going to have a frequency of 5.85 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Number seven, convert 700 nanometers of the wavelength of red light to meters. So this is a simple conversion problem, a no real formula needed for that one. The only thing that I need to know for this one is that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the minus ninth meters. So when I want to convert 700 nanometers to meters, I can use that. Boy, that's really hard to read, isn't it? Sorry, guys. You know my handwriting. It's neater up here, so that's okay. All right, so if I want to convert 700 nanometers to meters, I simply use that conversion factor. I know I need to have nanometers in the denominator of my conversion because I have it up here in the numerator of my original um, my original value and the unit that I want to end with I need in the numerator of my conversion factor. So when I do this out I know that the nanometers here will cancel out and 700 times 10 to the minus ninth meters and then if I put that in proper scientific notation well almost proper scientific notation I will have 7 times 10 to the seventh meters. Problem number eight. A hydrogen atom in a galaxy moving with a speed of 6.55 times 10 to the 6 meters per second away from the Earth emits light at a frequency of 6.16 times 10 to the 14th hertz. What frequency of light from that hydrogen atom would be observed by an astronomer on Earth? And the key uh, key word in this problem is that the, hydro, uh, the galaxy is moving away from the Earth. And because the astronomer and the galaxy are moving away from each other, the relative velocity between them is going to be negative. Remember when we use the frequency version of our Doppler equation for electromagnetic waves, if their objects are moving away from each other, the velocity is negative. If the, velo if the objects are moving toward each other, then the velocity is positive. So our velocity is going to be negative 6.55 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. The frequency emitted by the source, which is my hydrogen atom, is 6.16 times 10 to the 14th hertz. My speed of light, as always, is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I am looking for the observed frequency. So I'm going to use the frequency form of my Doppler equation, and I know that the observed frequency, oops, let me try to do this in pen here, I keep forgetting to switch over. The observed frequency is going to equal the source frequency times 1 minus, I have to use the minus sign here because my velocity is negative, minus the relative velocity between the Earth and the galaxy divided by the speed of light. I plug my values into this equation, so my source frequency, the relative velocity between the Earth and the galaxy, and my speed of light, and when I do the math out for this, I'm going to have a frequency of 6.03 times 10 to the 14th hertz.
Problem 9. A hydrogen atom in a galaxy moving with a speed of 6.55 times 10 to the 6 meters per second away from Earth emits light with a wavelength of 4.86 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. What wavelength would be observed on Earth from that hydrogen atom? So we are dealing with wavelengths here and not frequencies. And because, once again, the key word here is going to be away, the galaxy is moving away from the Earth, as most galaxies are. But because we are dealing with wavelengths, now that the astronomer and the galaxy are moving away from each other, the relative velocity is going to be positive. Remember in the previous problem, even the galaxy was moving away which made my velocity negative because we were working with frequencies. Now that we're working with wavelengths, it's reversed. Away is positive, toward is negative. So we have a velocity, a relative velocity between the Earth and the galaxy of 6.55 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. The wavelength emitted by the hydrogen atom, which is my source, is going to be 4.86 times 10 to the 7th meters. As always, my speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and we are looking for the observed wavelength. So I'm going to use the wavelength form of my Doppler equation. And I want to solve for the observed wavelength, so I need to isolate that by itself. Now, again, you can if it's easier for you to just plug the numbers in and start doing the math, that's fine. But I always find that it's fewer mistakes if you isolate your unknown variable before you start plugging in your known values. So to isolate this, I'm simply going to add the uh, source uh, wavelength to both sides. When I do that, that will cancel out. And then I have the observed wavelength equals the source wavelength plus the relative velocity divided by the speed of light times the source wavelength. And to make this just a little bit easier, so I have to plug fewer numbers into the calculator, I'm going to factor out lambda sub s from this right here. When I factor out lambda sub s from that, I'm going to get lambda sub s equals 1 plus v over c. I can plug my known values into that, and when I do that, I'm going to have 7.97 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, or 497 nanometers. Problem 10. An astronomer is looking at the spectrum of a galaxy and finds that it has an oxygen spectral line of 525 nanometers, while the laboratory value is measured at 513 nanometers. Calculate how fast a galaxy would be moving relative to the Earth. Explain whether the galaxy is moving toward or away from the Earth and how you know. All right, this one can be a little bit tricky, so let's just kind of break it down and look at it step by step. I know that the observed wavelength is going to be 525 nanometers, right? That's what the um, astronomer sees when he looks through his telescope. So that's my observed wavelength. And the laboratory value measured at 513 nanometers. So we can call that the actual wavelength emitted by the source. So I have my observed wavelength and my source wavelength. Of course, I always know the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I know that I am looking for the velocity, but I also need to know whether it is moving toward the Earth or away from the Earth. So if I look at the observed wavelength and the source wavelength, note that the observed wavelength is larger than, or should say longer because I use a measurement, is longer than the source wavelength. And because the observed wavelength is longer than the source wavelength, they are moving away from each other, which means that my relative velocity is going to be positive because I am dealing with wavelength. So I know that the um, astronomer and the galaxy that this, um, this oxygen emission is coming from are moving away from each other. So when I plug this into my Doppler equation for wavelength, I'm going to need to solve this for the velocity. So when I rearrange this to solve for velocity, and again, what I'm going to do here is just going to multiply both sides by C, and then divide both sides by lambda sub S. 
and then I will get this form of the equation, V equals C times lambda sub O minus lambda sub S divided by lambda sub S. And I plug all of my values into this equation and note that I am converting everything to meters. But as I said in the previous video from yesterday, you don't necessarily need to do that because if you look at what's going on with your dimensional analysis here, all of my um, all of my um, all of my units for length are going to cancel each other out and I'm just going to be left with this unit for speed which is what I want since I'm looking for velocity so it doesn't matter what my unit for length is in these problems um, just as long as you know that they cancel out and when I do all that math I am going to end up with a velocity of 7.02 times 10 to the sixth meters per second